All right, I figured I'd make a video on plasma cutters and some of the basic things to know about them in a lot of people. You know, I'm not maybe the best expert at all this stuff, but I do a lot with a plasma cutter. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this, whatever. But this is what works for me. And maybe some of these things you can learn for yourself and uh, a little bit about them. Let's talk about the machine. Uh, this is a, if you look here, it's a Cut 40 generic. Um, and a lot of them, I think, that say Cut 40, uh, Cut 50, you even have a Cut 30. Don't think I'd go there, but um, uh, the Cut 50 is probably one I'd be looking at today. Um, they didn't have them when I got this. I don't think it was Cut 40 or, you know, that was what you got. And they were the Chinese ones, and this one's kind of beat up. Been used quite a bit. It's been around the shop. You know, it's got overspray on it, It's and it keeps working. So I'm going to keep using it, and it works fine for a cheap plasma cutter. They have ones that are more expensive. My experience back was when in 1987 or 86, when they came out, I was at a paint show and they showed the plasma cutter and the guy goes, hey, check this out, use it. I grabbed the thing and I basically wrote my name in a piece of metal and I went, wow, that is cool. And uh, yeah. You know, ever since then, I always wanted one, but they were very expensive at that point. I don't know, they were probably two grand. And back then, that was like 10, 20 grand, you know, today. So it was a lot, a lot of money to spend on a plasma cutter. Had no real huge need for it at that point because MIG welders were even hard to find. Uh, they were expensive at that point. Now they're much cheaper. You can afford a big welder and a plasma cutter and basically build anything very quickly and nice. It's just my opinion, but uh, most of these I think are made in, in the internals are probably the same. Um, they probably stole each other's uh, design. And then the new cut, newer ones are called Cut 50 and they go to a 50 amp. Um, and they, I think, are just a little bit of an improvement over this one. Um, some of the issues with these cheap ones are the power switch goes out. But if you look on Amazon, they have these 20 amp power switches, tons of them. I always have a couple extra. And it usually goes out if I'm running it on full for a long period of time or big long cuts or something like that. Which if you're just buying one of these to use to cut quarter inch steel, I mean, or bigger than quarter inch steel all the time, it really, to me, it isn't the right tool. Um, plasma cutter is to cut, you know, I would say sheet metal is like number one. Um, anything a lot larger than that, um, I would say is, I would use something to cut more of a straight cut um, because you're gonna just end up cleaning up everything you have to cut anyway. You know, there's times when you wanna use it for that, but if your primary use is for that, I, I would use a cutoff wheel or cutoff saw of some kind for most of my cutting. And so these are all mostly inverter units. You see how small this is? Uh, this is actually very small uh, if you compare it to my hand, uh, which I have large hands, but that's a very small unit. Um, and these inverter ones, they do the job. One of the big other problems with these small units or these new, uh, the, the inverter ones, you know, they've been around about, about 10 or 15 years now. I call them new compared to, you know, the 80s, um, is they do how they don't work very well in fact mine doesn't work really at all on 110 so if all you have is a 110 circuit um, it might not be the tool again for you um, if you're gonna buy one I would definitely look at getting one with the uh, with 220 and make sure that you have a 220 hookup somewhere and get an along extension cord as well I'll put the links in the video for those things they do have them on Amazon and I'll just give you a generic one to look at um, they are very cheap you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a one that will work um, the issues like I said are going to be things like the power switch and that it doesn't operate very well on 110 in fact it's kind of useless on 110 this one is uh, so but I've heard maybe the cut 50s are a little bit better 
on 110, but I would definitely not figure on using it on that. Um, this would, you know, if it works as bad as this one does on 110, uh, I would say it's almost useless. So if you're new to the channel, I would suggest watching some of my other videos on me doing metal work and using a plasma cutter to kind of help you um, learn a little bit about what to do and what not to do and stuff like that. Um, I've watched guys cut on plasma cutters and so many of them, I just, I, I don't understand what they're doing, but they, they use it like an arc welder and that's not really, to me, that's not how they work. I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but this is not how I do it at all. But I've watched guys and they'll go and they'll set their plasma cutter. I'm not going to turn it on right now because I'm just doing this for demonstration. We'll do some cutting a little bit later. Um, but uh, what they'll do is they'll use it and they'll strike an arc and then they'll pull it away and then cut. And usually what that does is that gives you a really ugly slag cut. And I don't think that's how they were really intended to be used. Um, what I do is these are called consumables. And that's exactly what they're designed to go through. You are designed to go through these suckers. I mean, you're going to go through them a lot. And I go through a lot of consumables because I don't want slaggy cuts. I want clean. This is cut with a plasma cutter. See that edge right there? That is clean. There is That's straight. It's clean. It's nice. Um, and, and to me, that's what you're looking for, right? You know, it's a way to cut metal and have it be straight and clean and nice. And this is, I think, 18 gauge. You know, that's something I would be cutting with the plasma cutter. Um, if I wanted to just cut something and I'm going to throw away demolition it, you know, if I'm going to cut like, you know, quarter inch steel or half inch steel, you know, then I'll use the plasma cutter for that. But if I'm going to uh, make it look nice and clean, uh, I, I'm not going to be using the plasma cutter much for anything larger than uh, eighth inch. You can cut eighth inch really clean with it too. For instance, I was trying to cut out a design, and of course I messed up a couple times on my cut. And uh, but that is a plasma cut edge right there. Um, as you can see that's not bad. The slag is a little bit on this side, <clears throat> and that's because what I'm doing is I hold the plasma cutter. That's why they have this little cross, I believe, on the tip so that you can hold it right on the metal. So I'll put it down and hold it on the metal, pull the trigger and cut, okay? So, uh, and, and there's guys that'll say, no, you're not supposed to do it that way. You're supposed to push the button, hold it, and then lift up a little bit and then pull it and you get such a terrible slaggy cut from doing that. If you wanna do it that way, you go ahead. I'm gonna keep doing it the way that I do it and I'll get nice clean cuts with mine. So this, the tip, if the tip is new, it'll cut better. Uh, this here, they think the tip was older and that's why they're consumables. You go through them. You are supposed to go through these things. So on my plasma cutter, what I did is I bought a cheaper gun. This had a better gun on it. Okay, the reason I bought the cheaper gun is because these consumables right here, look like this style, this style, this is a short one. They have long ones, and they both fit on the same gun. So this consumable right here, it has a it has electrodes that looks like this. These are very cheap. I can buy like a hundred of these. I don't know. It's very very cheap on Amazon. And the other ones I had to get at the welding supply. And of course, if you go to the welding supply, you're going to pay pay a lot more money, right? So, uh, and they were you know, so it's just the better way to go is to buy the cheaper ones so so sometimes people, people go oh well get a really good plasma cutter well that's up to you i would buy the cheap one and get the consumables that are cheap and plan on going through them to use and get lots of use out of it so to get the cleanest tip to cut you need a nice fresh tip uh, i run the air pressure up is to the maximum allowed for your machine and that will blow the slag away cleanly, and then you'll get a nice clean cut from doing that. Um, if you're using high amperage all the time, like I said, the hotter the amperage you're using, the more consumables you're gonna go through. So that's when you wanna make a decision if you're cutting the thick stuff, then you might wanna pull the plasma cutter tip away a little bit. It'll make your, your consumables will last longer. But you know, like I said, 
you know, if you're looking at this thing that yeah, if you're looking at this thing that way to, to you know, then you may, may not be looking at it the right way. To me, the plasma cutter is designed really for doing a lot with sheet metal and the thicker metal, you know, it's mostly for like demolition and stuff like that where you're trying to get rid of things. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and do a cut here for you guys so you can see what, um, how, how, to, how to do it the way that I think is right. Other people might think it's wrong, but that's the way I do it. So I've got my metal here. Go ahead and connect up my ground. Usually, sometimes what I'll do is I'll ground. If I'm going to do, a, I'll ground something underneath what I'm doing. So you don't always have to have your ground on your metal, as long as it's on something that's metal that's touching the metal you're using. Uh, that'll work too. It's actually a little easier that way. Like if I'm on a metal rack, I'll put this thing set up and then I'll just cut right off of that. So again, the best thing to have is always a safety shield, something covering your whole face because slag can jump back at you. I'm just gonna do this uh, my way. And like I said, you should be using better safety equipment than I use, but um, I use safety goggles and that's what I'm gonna use. So yeah, make sure you look up all your safety information, use the proper goggles that you're supposed to, your face shield that you're supposed to use. Uh, like I said, you whole, should be covering your whole face. I've done a lot of it, so I'm a little more comfortable with doing things a little bit not so safe. So that's my, that's me, and not you. You should be doing it the right way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I use this as a straight edge. And then I'll hold my consumable right next to the straight edge so when you see me doing it you'll know what I'm doing I'm going to hold my consumable right next to the straight edge I'm going to use that as a guide and let's see how straight it cuts alright let's take a look get this just right sometimes I'll clamp it this one I'm not going to It's a little old. I should have put a new tip on, but that's the, the cut I'm making right now is not that important. So that's why I got that void. And that's a good example for you guys. If your tip's old, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get some of that. You're going to get a little more slag. You can get a little bit cleaner cut with a fresh tip on there. So, but that's the method I use to cut straight lines. Like I said, this is going to get a, this is a wild edge. It doesn't make any difference. But if I wanted this to be really straight and clean, I'd have put a fresh tip on. But I don't want to waste them right now because they are consumables. They cost money, and you're going to have to use a lot of those. In fact, when you buy a plasma cutter, find out what consumable it takes in order you know 25 or 50 or whatever you're going to do a lot of cutting because you will go through them so if you notice I was holding the tip right on the metal and pulling it at an even speed now this is where you get the, the, the practice is you see that tips kind of blown out the hole see how big it is and we can see it not focusing is it but uh, if your consumable is old, you get that, that kind of cut. Hang on a second. Yeah, it was cutting at, say, uh, that could be done at like 20 amps on 220. If you were on 110, uh, you'd be probably popping your breaker at, you know, 18 amps or something like that. And you could probably still cut that, but it would come out really, really uneven. It will spit a lot. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work really. To me, it just doesn't work the same. So, the thicker the metal, the higher the amperage. If you're cutting sheet metal, this is 20 gauge. Uh, so what you're trying to do when you cut like that is you're trying to uh, pull not too slow, because if you go too slow, okay, let's say you're cutting and you pull it too slow, then what happens is because your tip is right on the surface, it will start to stick to the surface and especially if it's like a rusty surface 
or something like that it'll start to drag and then when it drags too much it'll kind of stick to it and then you'll have uh, you'll have you know you'll, you'll burn up your consumables faster you'll have issues with that um, and if you pull it too too fast you end up with voids like what I did right here um, you a lot of times that happens because you're going too fast so it's all about getting that speed down to where you're pulling it at the precise speed for the metal you're going through to get a nice clean cut and get it all done just in one shot without having to you know stop and redo stuff so you know that's what takes a little bit of practice it's really not hard to do uh, I think just anybody can use a plasma cutter it's 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 the first time I did it you know I grabbed one and I never even used one before and I wrote my name in a piece of in a, in a fender that was at a show and uh, you know or I was actually I was at the time we were painting graphics and I put a graphic in the side of it I did a, I did a heartbeat <laughs> in the side of a piece of metal and so it's really not that hard to use um, but the thing that another thing that you'll find too is if you're going to cut a lot of like dirty metal like if you're cutting stuff that's like rusty and dirty like this okay so if you're cutting this you're going to have your consumables are going to wear out a lot faster um, it's harder to pull it so when you're on this it'll start to catch because it, you know the metal thickness is variating because it's it's rusty so you'll find that that happens so then again that's a time when you might want to actually pull your tip away and cut because you're not worried about saving this piece of metal you know you're not worried about a straight cut on that so you know there's times when you're going to want to pull it away and there's times when you're going to want to keep it flat but when I'm cutting through like, even like this I'll cut I'll just leave it straight on the metal and cut right through it in fact even when I'm doing this stuff I'll hold it right on it and just lightly hold it on and I won't push it really hard or anything you don't want to push your push your tip really hard onto your metal you just kind of let it just kind of set there and glide across it you know so it's it, it's a little bit of a practice thing but it's really not that hard to do you know I, I would encourage most people to buy one and try it because once you, you can start with a cheap one one of the ones you know they're like 250 bucks 229 dollars I would say get at least the cut 50 um, don't get the cut 30 um, I, I've seen issues with those um, I think they have different electronics in them so the but I think the cut 50 and this is just my opinion I don't know this for sure but I think the cut 50s have pretty much the same guts okay most of them do and they work you know they get the job done so you know one might have a better switch in another one if you know of a one that works better than others um, you might want to put that in the comments below if you're a plasma cutting guy um, and you know we'll try and get you the Amazon link for that but they are very cheap on Amazon they work okay uh, I heard the Harbor Freight one works okay but it's a little more money you know it's like I think 600 bucks you know the ones on Amazon we're talking about you know 229 250 and they even got one for less than a hundred dollars um, or less than two hundred dollars but um, I, I like I said that's a 30 30 amp I would not I would just go to the next level and buy that one first but um, because I know that this one works I don't know that much about that unit um, if you maybe if you upgraded the switch on it because it has a lot more issues with the switch um, and, and like I said if, if you're using the unit and you're not maxing it out you're not having it on 40 amps all the time cutting quarter inch steel then uh, you, you, the switch might last for a long long time mine lasts you know months and months and months and months and I cut a lot obviously I'm working on this thing so you can imagine I'm using it for everything so you can imagine I am cutting like crazy all the time so and my switches last maybe six months or so so anyway just a little bit about plasma cutters I'm not like I said I'm not the best expert but I use one all the time and you know there's other guys that are much smarter than me and some of them tell people things that I don't do so I I don't know it, you know whatever maybe listen to them maybe listen to me it's up to you talk to you in the next video like please like share and subscribe